Hi everyone, um, my name is Swadesh Chaudhary. I am an IO architect at Intel. Um, I also serve as the uh, one of the co-chairs of the protocol work group in UCIE. Um, and today, um, you know, in the next 10-15 minutes, I'm going to try to give you a really quick tutorial on all the different protocols um, that we have supported over UCIE. Um, our focus today is going to be on UCIE 1.0, uh, but hopefully you've seen the announcement from yesterday about, about 1.1 that has certain enhancements um, uh, in, in, in terms of the uh, protocol support. I've briefly mentioned that, but, but we are focusing on one dollar tutorial today. So um, in, in terms of, you know, the UCIE stack, um, first want to just, uh, you know, have everyone focus on, you know, it's a very layered stack approach that we've gone after. So there is a physical layer um, module, uh, which takes care of things like link training, lane repair, lane reversal, scrambling, descrambling, um, sideband training and transfers. It has the analog front end as well as a forwarded clock um, architecture. Its uh, interface to uh, a die to die adapter is through a interface that's called raw die to die interface that's also defined in the UCI spec. Um, and the idea behind defining these kind of interfaces um, that you see here in terms of the uh, RDI and the FDI is to try and encourage um, you know IP vendor interop as we are trying to build an ecosystem around chiplets. So, um, you know, one of our goals is that we should be able to take a physical layer from IP vendor A, uh, that to the adapter perhaps from IP vendor B, um, and then still have them interrupt with each other. And so, you know, we've, we've put a lot of emphasis around that uh, in terms of sort of picking the layered architecture for UCIE. Um, and then we also focus on things like software, um, and then Jerome's gonna talk about manageability and security. So, uh, you know, trying to take a look at a full comprehensive system level approach uh, from a chiplet architecture perspective. And then above the adapter, um, you know, the adapter takes care of things like uh, link retry when needed, um, link state management, protocol negotiation, because we support um, not only multiple protocols, but we also support multiple flip formats per protocol. And I'll talk through some of those um, over the next few slides. But the adapter takes care of negotiating that with the remote link partner so that you can sort of operate in a common known configuration. And then above that, we have the protocol layer. Um, and again, you know, there's a well-defined interface uh, called FDI that interfaces with the adapter. And in terms of the protocol supported, we have uh, PCIe CXL, as well as uh, provision for a streaming protocol, which could be any vendor-defined protocol, um, like CHI or AXI or, or, or any other proprietary protocols as well. And then, like I mentioned, there are multiple set formats uh, permitted, and we'll, we'll sort of go through a bunch of those. Uh, in addition to sort of, you know, flip transfers, we also have support for raw mode. Um, in certain applications, uh, might be in a situation where they're just looking to disaggregate a big die, and they just want to take raw bits across in terms of their fabric wires, and, and not worry about packetization as much. Or they may be looking at other applications, like building a retimer to go off package interconnects and things like that, where they want to plumb in a stronger CRC and forward error correction codes. So we've given the raw format um, support for that where uh, the adapter data path and its split CRC and retry is, is completely bypassed. Um, and so protocol layer gets to be in charge of all of the transport layer properties in that, in that case. So talking a little bit more about the adapter functionality, um, you know, we'll go over some of the flip formats. Um, the one thing um, you know, I want to point out is what we've done is in, in order to simplify transitions of existing IPs, uh, that are building you know, PCIe and CXL transaction layers to a UCIe uh, stack, we've absorbed the RMUX functionality defined in the CXL specification within the die-to-die -die adapter. So that takes care of all of the ALMP handshakes that are defined in the CXL specification. And what it exposes on FDI is effectively the virtual link state machines um, you know, from, a, from a transaction layer perspective to the protocol layer. We have a very lightweight CRC computation. It's a 16-bit CRC. Uh, over 128 bytes um, for for you know the corresponding flip formats, and I'll talk more about that coming up. Um, the flip retry mechanism we've leveraged from PCIe 6.0. Um, so you know, again, in the interest of trying to make things easier for people to transition over, um, the retry mechanism uh, is more or less leveraged from PCIe, but we've made certain simplifications because it's a die-to-die -die link. The VER is very very low, um, so we don't need all of the features that PCIe has, uh, you know, uh, supported in, in the retry flows. So we've taken simplifications um, when necessary in order to help area and power optimizations within the stack. 
And then I'll briefly touch upon, you know, we have like a state machine hierarchy uh, defined in the specification to take care of things like link bring up, um, you know, power management, error flows, interaction with software in terms of, you know, disabling the link and things like that. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then, like I mentioned, one of the important roles of the adapter is to do parameter negotiation um, with the remote link partner so that it can figure out which protocol and which click format it wants to operate in. So these are some of the um, example configurations that are possible uh, in UCI 1.0. Um, the first one that's shown there is a single protocol layer talking to the die to die adapter. That could be a PCIe application or a streaming protocol by itself uh, that wants to take advantage of the die to die link. The second configuration is showing an example of a CXL stack. So there you see two different protocol layers. There's the CXL.io protocol layer as well as the CXL cache mem protocol layer. And like I mentioned, since the ARBMUX is inside the die to die adapter, what's exposed on FDI is effectively the virtual link state machine to each of its uh, protocol layers. So the .io will just see the VLSM uh, transitions on FDI directly. And then the final configuration is an interesting one. Um, now, because the die to die link, uh, you know, the raw bandwidth that it can support is, is much, much higher than off package interconnects, um, we wanted to allow uh, people to utilize a higher bandwidth without having to, um, you know, instantiate multiple uh, uh, physical layers uh, if, if they want to go there. So what we plan for is a capability to put in two different protocol stacks um, on that utilize the same physical layer and that data adapter on the UCI stack. So the example shown here is, uh, you know, two sets of CXL stacks that are talking to the same die to die adapter. So an example application of this might be, you know, as people are sort of designing and plumbing for Gen 6 like bandwidth, um, they can actually take their existing Gen 5 transaction layers and then have that talk to a die to die stack that suppose an equivalent of Gen 6 bandwidth. And because we have two of them, sort of we're getting the same aggregate bandwidth across the die to die link. So we get a little bit more efficiency over, you know, bandwidth per show line in terms of that application um, as people are sort of designing and scaling up the bandwidth of their their protocol layer. And we have certain rules defined in there so that, you know, we don't overflow the receiver's uh, processing rate and it only sees an equivalent of Gen 5 bandwidth from a single uh, protocol stack perspective. So now coming to the different flip formats, there's about six flip formats that I'm going to uh, go through a little bit quickly in the interest of time. But then I'll spend some time on the summary table that sort of shows the matrix of different protocols and different flip formats. Um, and you know what's mandatory and what's optional in the spec today. So the first one is just the raw format where the protocol layer is allowed to send um, you know any bytes across the link. Uh, the adapter and the physical layer have no notion of what the flip boundary might be. It's all up to the protocol layer. So in this case, you know uh, link reliability things like CRC, FEC have to be taken care of uh, by the protocol layer as well. The adapter simply forwards all of the bytes to the physical layer, and the physical layer sends it over to the remote link partner. And we support this format across all of the protocols, so PCI, CXL, and streaming, um, because different applications might have um, different needs of, of supporting a stronger CRC and a stronger FEC if they're going from an off package uh, to an off package link or after the die to die link. The second format, um, which ends up being mandatory for PCI non flip mode and, and uh, CXL 68 byte flip mode, is uh, essentially the same format that's defined in. CXL specification for 68 byte flits. And uh, the main reason for having this was um, for uh, implementations that only support PCI non flip mode or CXL 2.0 specifications, uh, they can operate in this flip format over a die to die link as well. However, uh, we've uh, made sure to take in certain simplifications in terms of how this flip format works. So typically, if people familiar with PCI and CXL will recognize that in these modes, the link CRC and retry is handled by the link layer in, in the protocol stack. But because we have the adapter taking care of CRC and retry, um, all of that stuff can be optimized away for an implementation that's targeting a die to die link. So we have a common CRC retry scheme that's provided by the adapter. And so what happens is the protocol layer just inserts uh, the 64 bytes relevant for the protocol over the uh, FDI interface. The adapter inserts the flit header and the two bytes of CRC, and does the barrel shifting uh, to align it to a 64-byte uh, 
uh, you know, set of lanes if, if, if that's what the physical layer is, is designed to. And uh, because the adapter is taking care of uh, the flip header and retry, all of that logic uh, can be optimized away from the uh, protocol layer. So, you know, the, the PCI defined ACNAC DLLPs are not uh, relevant in this mode for, for the DAC driver. Then the third format, people will recognize it's very similar to the PCIe 6.0 uh, flit uh, that's defined in the PCIe specification. Um, however, there are a couple of differences. So in the PCIe flit, the last 14 bytes uh, are reserved for 8 bytes of CRC and 6 bytes of FEC. Um, but because over the data dialing, the BER is so low, we only need uh, 16 bits of CRC per 128 bytes. So we get you know about 10, bit, 10 bytes of reserved uh, space and we put the CRC towards the end uh, for the split format. And then again, the flit header and DLP uh, closely follows the definition in PCIe, except the adapters taking care of uh, inserting the relevant information um, to, to uh, take care of retry and things like that. And then the next one, again, we have support for the, for the standard 256 byte flit that's defined in the CXL specification. So you, are, you will see that, again, these splits follow um, pretty much the same format as what's in the CXL specification, um, except uh, what's changing is towards the end, instead of the 14 bytes that were reserved for CRC and FEC, we have our four bytes of uh, two sets of CRC that's inserted by the adapter. So CRC0 would be computed over the first 128 bytes, and CRC1 would be comp computed over the next uh, 128 bytes. And then we have about 10 bytes of reserve space. But the rest of the definition, um, you know, uh, goes along with the CXL specification, uh, with the exception that, you know, the, the retry and all of that is taken care of uh, by the adapter. All right. Then, uh, you know, people familiar with CXL spec will also remember that CXL has defined latency optimized splits, where each 128 byte half gets six bytes of CRC. So we've mapped those splits as well uh, over the dagger dialing. Uh, the only uh, change being, Instead of the six byte CRC, you have the corresponding two bytes of CRC for that 128 byte half. Um, and so you'd see in the first 128 byte half, you get four bytes of reserve space and two bytes of CRC. And in the second 128 byte half, because there's no FPC, you get 10 bytes of uh, reserve space and two bytes of CRC. And then we made a slight optimization in a dot IO flit uh, that would allow you to put a flit marker as well as DLLPs in the same flit, just because we have some free space to insert um, bytes into the flit, um, we ended up, uh, uh, you know, allowing to insert uh, DLLP and, and, and a flit marker within the .io flit at, at the fixed positions given there. Other than that, you know, all the, all the framing rules, the slot definitions are all, you know, leveraged from CXL specifications. They map exactly as is to the to the Now. Again, one last set of flit formats that's that's given here is an enhancement on the latency optimized flit. And the reason for that is because we know that a die to die link will typically have a much lower BER and it will need only 16 bits of CRC. Um, we want to be able to get higher efficiency and encourage people to utilize the latency optimized flit formats, um, especially because it becomes very uh, important for things like CXL.mem protocol or CXL.cache protocol which are extremely latency sensitive and every nanosecond counts there. So in order to boost the efficiency, what we've done is we've taken the reserved bytes and allowed the protocol layer to insert certain uh, protocol uh, relevant information inside the flit. So what you'll see is in the cache mem flit, uh, conveniently there were 14 bytes left. So the protocol layer can insert a 14 byte edge slot that's defined in the CXL spec to give a higher efficiency uh, for that flit when it's mapping it over a die to die link. And then from a PCI perspective, since everything's at a D word granularity, um, we kept it simple and, and just added an extra D word towards the end of the flit so that the protocol layer can, can sort of insert an extra D word of TLPs um, within the same 256 byte flit information. So this helps us utilize some of the reserved bytes and give a higher efficiency um, while keeping the latency advantages when mapping the same protocols or a die to die link. And then like I mentioned, this is the matrix that I wanted to spend a couple of minutes on. So for every protocol uh, that's shown as a column, we have a row that shows you know, what are the flit formats um, 
uh, that, that are in, in the spec, and then which ones are optional versus mandatory. And so you'll notice that the raw mode is, is available for all protocols to use. It's optional for PCI and CXL protocols, but it's mandatory for streaming because in UCI 1.0, there isn't uh, any other fit formats available for streaming. However, we've done an enhancement in UCI 1.1 where all of the other flip formats are optional as well um, uh, for streaming with the latency optimized one getting uh, strongly recommended. And so that was one of the enhancements we did in 1.1 that allows the streaming protocols to take advantage of the adapter CRC and retry and use the same flip formats that we have for PCI and CXL. Um, in terms of the 68-byte FLIT format, that's mandatory for PCI non-FLIT mode because you really don't have the 256-byte FLIT for that protocol. Um, and it becomes mandatory for CXL 68-byte FLIT mode as well. So that would be for cases where you're mapping a CXL 2.0 uh, specification uh, to a die to die link. And then the standard 256-byte end header is just the name that we've picked for the PCIe standard FLIT format. Uh, that becomes mandatory for PCIe FLIT mode and it's not applicable for anything else. And then the standard 256-byte start header, um, we've picked that name for the CXL flit format, because really the main difference there is the flit header is either in the beginning of the flit or towards the end of the flit. So for CXL, the you know 256-byte start header ends up being mandatory for the 256-byte flit mode uh, set of protocols, which covers all of the protocol features that are in CXL 3.0 uh, specification. And then the latency optimized splits are applicable for, again, the CXL 256 byte flip mode protocol. But we've strongly recommended uh, to use the uh, enhanced efficiency uh, latency optimized split, uh, which gives those extra bytes for the protocol layer to improve the die to die efficiency for those uh, formats. And then finally, um, you know, like I mentioned in the beginning, I wanted to just give a flavor of, um, you know, we've, we've really tried to keep this layered approach that helps us be modular and um, also maintain um, easy sort of transfer from existing software uh, to a die to die link uh, aware software. And so, you know, from an adapter perspective, we've given uh, different sets of uh, state machine hierarchy that take care of some of these translations so that from a protocol layer perspective, it looks very similar to what it would look like if it was sending uh, packets over a off package link. Again, that's in the interest of trying to make it easier for people to port over their existing designs. And so from a CXL perspective, the virtual link state machine is what's exposed to the protocol layer. However, from a, a single protocol like PCI or streaming, we'll have an adapter link state machine that exposes similar states to the protocol layer um, that would be available for, uh, you know, like a, a PCI uh, link transfer. And so that you know, negotiation of the adapter link state management with the remote link partner, we utilize the sideband link over UCI die to die. So all of that stays away from the main data path and we really want people to optimize uh, the main data path for latency um, and, and uh, power. So uh, that was just like a very quick overview and a little flavor of what was um, there in the, in, the, in the protocol side of UCI, there's, there's a lot more. Um, I encourage people to join the consortium if they haven't yet. Um, there's a lot of work going on uh, in terms of uh, other aspects like compliance and manageability and security. And, and uh, uh, so it, it's, it's a, a really fun place to, to innovate. And so um, please let me know if you have any questions. That was my last slide.